Conan, what is best in life? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and they hear the lamentation of the women. Conan the Barbarian is a 1982 fantasy adventure film directed and co-written by John Milius, starring the pre-governator Arnold Schwarzenegger and the voice James Earl Jones. It's based on the stories by Robert E. Howard, and to be frank, this flick is a good romp through fantasy land taking us on a journey in a fictional prehistoric world of dark magic and savagery. It is one of the greatest warrior adventure movies of all time, with one of the greatest underrated scores of the age too. I mean, just to listen, it is epic. I am your epic host, Nostalgic Nick, and today we're heading back to the prehistoric age to check back in on the cast of Conan the Barbarian. Where are all those muscles today? If you enjoy our tale, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a cast rewind like this. This you can trust, so let's dig into some sword and sorcery. Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan the Barbarian is a mighty warrior who was born on the battlefield. This guy is a hulk of a man of few words, but his actions speak for themselves. Conan tries everything once, but he learns from it, and his actor might never top this film again. Schwarzenegger's career has been monumental, and it helped him become one of the most recognizable people in the world. Born in Austria in 1947, he showed an early interest in bodybuilding and began lifting weights at a young age. And then a few reps later, he became Mr. Universe, even winning Mr. Olympia a staggering seven times. After winning Mr. Universe, Arnold moved to the States to pursue acting. And before he became Conan, he enjoyed some success, first with 1976's Stay Hungry co-starring with Jeff Bridges and Sally Field. He played a guy training for Mr. Universe, so yeah, his muscles opened the door to Hollywood. But what sealed his famous fate would be a pair of dark sunglasses and a quest to save Sarah Connor. I'll be back. The Terminator hit theaters the same year as Conan, 1984, and the world was now on Arnold's time. Commando and Predator would follow in the late 80s, and this guy was a blockbuster baller. In the early 2000s, he made a successful transition into politics, becoming the governor of California and serving two terms. He is widely credited with bringing the state out of a fiscal crisis. Arnold achieved a black belt in Taekwondo, but he's never quit acting either. He kicked more butt in the Expendables franchise and was really quite good in 2017's Aftermath. Today, the Austrian oak and founder of the Austrian World Summit is 75 years old. And get this, he even has a Legend of Conan project in the works, where he will be reprising his beyond iconic role. Arnold will, in fact, be back. James Earl Jones. Steel isn't strong, boy. Flesh is stronger. Thulsa Doom is a sorcerer and evil snake cult leader who seeks to enslave Conan. He's cruel and sadistic and slaughtered Conan's tribe. This evil Doom seeker rivals James Earl Jones's Darth Vader as his greatest villain of all time. The Force is strong with this one, and James and Arnold became great friends on set. Arnold helped James stay in shape, and James helped Arnold learn the craft of acting. Jones's career has spanned more than six decades, and he has been described as, quote, one of America's most distinguished and versatile actors, even though his mother wanted him to become a lawyer. We are lucky he listened to the voice in his head, or maybe the voice coming out of his mouth, because it booms. And by 1957, he was on Broadway. His film debut was 1964's Dr. Strangelove, and then it was a four-episode arc on Dr. Kildare, which took him to his first ever leading role in a film, 1970's The Great White Hope. He played Jack Jefferson and earned a Golden Globe and Academy Award nomination. In 1977, James first voiced his most well-known role, simply his voice, playing Darth Vader in Star Wars. And what makes this even more impressive is that James had a stuttering problem as a child and spoke very little. 
He says he still has to think about what he aims to say very carefully before speaking. Talk about perseverance. And Jones is in two of my favorite baseball films of all time, 1989's Field of Dreams and 1992's The Sandlot. But despite these great roles and pretty moving ads for MLB recently, James Earl Jones reportedly hates baseball, which goes to show you how good of an actor he really is. Today at 91 years old, check out his voice once more in the newest Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus show. Valerie Kanison. The beautiful princess was the task given to Conan and his guild to retrieve, as she's under Thulsa Doom's spell. Valerie became an actress almost by accident, performing as an acrobat as a child, and then taking acting classes as a shy teen for exposure therapy. Her big break was 1979's French Postcards. She became more familiar to American audiences when she starred in 1982's Summer Lovers, along with Peter Gallagher and Daryl Hannah. She played an archaeologist and actually dug at an ancient find. And get this, she uncovered real ancient pottery from around 3,500 years ago. Just incredible. But afterwards, she left Hollywood to concentrate on her family life, before terribly in 1989. Valerie died in a car accident in France at just 31 years old. Max von Sido. You alone have stood up to the gods. And what are you? Feet. King Osric is the leader who offers Conan a reward to save his daughter from Thulsa. He was a brave warrior, even though he's now pretty much just a drunk. And Max is superb, delivering some of the best dialogue in the film. He hams up this performance, and it is really quite fun to watch. Von Sido is one of the most prolific and respected actors of his generation. An early prominent role was 1957's The Seventh Seal, where he iconically played chess with death. The incredible picture is written and directed by Ingmar Bergman, and the actor and director worked together quite a bit. But Max is best known for his aged priest in The Exorcist. But you may be surprised to learn, Max was only 42 years old when filming. His old age makeup was subtle and believable, and it was one of the most terrifying films of all time. Next came Conan, and then his favorite film he made, 1987's Pele the Conqueror, which got him his first Academy Award nomination. Unfortunately, he lost out to Dustin Hoffman for his genius role in Rain Man. In 2002, Max enjoyed one of his biggest commercial successes, playing the pre-crime director opposite Tom Cruise in Spielberg's Minority Report. Max von Sydow's final film role was Echoes of the Past, released in 2021, as this legendary actor passed away in March of 2020 at the age of 90. Sandal Bergman Orphaned at a young age, Valeria was one of the most ruthless and feared warriors in the land. A skilled swordswoman and a romantic interest for Conan, Sandal did a lot of great fight scenes in this one. And since they couldn't find a stunt woman matching her size, she did them all. Only once, nearly losing a finger during the shoot. Bergman began her career as a dancer catching the eye of the incomparable Bob Fosse, who cast her as a replacement dancer in the Broadway production of Pippin. She made it onto the tube in the early 70s as part of Dean Martin's Gold Diggers, completing 43 episodes of The Dean Martin Show. Her film debut was 1977's All That Jazz. In 1985, she was offered the lead role for another Arnold epic, but they asked her to shift over to the villain instead. Saying of her villainous queen, quote, She is a prime example of what can happen when somebody doesn't get enough hugs as a child. Also in the 80s, you may remember her as an instructor for the Firm series of exercise videos. Today, in her early 70s, she hasn't acted since 2003, playing a dancer in Robert Downey Jr.'s The Singing Detective. But you can still find this retired actress at sci-fi conventions. Ben Davidson. You. Rexor is one of the barbarian chieftains who allied themselves with Conan to overthrow Thulsa Doom. He is a fierce warrior, emotional, and driven. Quite frankly, he is nearly as commanding as Arnold himself. Ben Davidson was first famous for sports. He was recruited to play football at the University of Washington in 1959 
and he was a part of the Rose Bowl winning teams under head coach Jim Owens. This led to his fourth round selection in the 1961 draft, gaining attention as a skilled defensive end for the Packers and Redskins, but mainly the Oakland Raiders achieving the All-Star team three times. This Miller Lite All-Star transitioned to acting by playing a football player in the 1970 film M.A.S.H. He also portrayed Porter the Bouncer in Behind the Green Door in 1972 and a convict football player in Necessary Roughness in 1991. Davidson and fellow Oakland Raider teammate Tom Keating were both avid motorcycle riders and completed a ride from California to the Panama Canal. This powerful football star and actor passed away from prostate cancer at 72 years old, and his football and motorcycle partner Keating died just two months later also from prostate cancer. Cassandra Gava. The witch is a powerful and exotic sorceress, a very evil woman who enjoys tormenting and killing people. Cassandra Gava got her start on TV with General Hospital, riding that wave to a 12 episode arc as O'Malley in the first two seasons of Trapper John MD. But she is best known for this Conan role, as well as the slave woman Alessa in High Road to China. Calling all Jefferson Starship fans. Check out your vinyl for Spitfire and you will see Cassandra on the cover. Throughout the 80s, she populated a lot of B-movies and she's still acting today. Today at 63 years old, she just had a small role as Vera in a John Malkovich movie titled Chariot, which just came out in 2022. She has produced and served as a casting assistant and also has a staggering eight projects in the works. So if you're a B-movie horror fan, get ready for Pig Killer coming out soon. There you have it. It's no wonder it went on to gain such a huge cult following and a deserving sequel, reboot, and the upcoming spinoff project but nothing will be as iconic as the 1982 original. So tell us, did you watch Conan the Barbarian in theaters back in the day? Is it the best of the 1980s Schwarzenegger action fest? If not, which one gets the nod? Kindergarten cop? Get in the comments and tell me all memories of Conan the Barbarian. And if you enjoyed our rewind, please hit the thumbs up icon for us. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss a memory. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.